Hey everybody, how's it going? Connor today at eTrailer.com. We're going to be taking a look at the Hopkins 4 and 7 pole trailer connector adapter here for our 2019 Toyota Highlander. Now granted this may vary a little bit depending on what trailer connector mounting bracket we're using but more often than not it's going to be uh, secured to the hitch receiver tube here which is going to give us a nice accessible location here as well as going to be sturdy so we don't have to worry about it shifting around or plugging in our trailer connectors. So a seven pole trailer connector is going to be a step up from the standard four way trailer connector. And some reasons why you might need a seven way trailer connector, number one, the most common is if you have electric brakes on your trailer, you are going to be required to run a seven way trailer connector. And another common occurrence we see of the seven way trailer connectors being used is if the trailer has a battery and you need to run a battery charge line circuit. So if you have a larger trailer with electric brakes or an onboard battery, chances are it's going to use a seven way trailer connector. So we're going to need one of these for the vehicle. So this trailer connector here is sort of unique and then it offers pretty much plug and play installation because it's going to plug into an existing four way trailer connector we have on the vehicle. And if you don't have one of these, we have plenty of plug and play options here at eTrailer. You do, however, need to know if you have the factory tow package or not beforehand. And you could just call the dealer or look at your window sticker to determine this. So something else unique about this particular kit here is it comes with pretty much everything you need to install it. It comes with this nice bracket here. It also comes with some hardware to attach it to the bracket as well as all our wiring connections already have crimped on connectors such as the ring terminal for the ground and the butt connector for our reverse light circuit, our battery charge line circuit, and our electric brake output circuit. Now depending on what functions we need our seven way to have, we're going to be running these up to the cab of the vehicle or to the battery. So as we said, if the trailer has a battery on board that we need charged, there's going to be a black wire that will run to the vehicle's battery here with an inline circuit breaker. If the trailer has electric brakes, there's going to be a blue wire that comes from the back of our trailer connector that will run up into the cab of the vehicle to a brake controller. And then finally, we'll have a purple wire, which will be run to the reverse light circuit. However, more often than not, that's not going to be used because most trailers don't have reverse lights. But if you do, you would just go ahead and splice into the vehicle's reverse lights. Now keep in mind, we don't have to use all those connections. If our trailer doesn't have one of those functions, we'll just simply tape that wire up to be used as a later date. So as we can see here, we actually have two trailer connector points here on our trailer connector. We're going to have the standard four-way, which we see here, as well as the larger seven-way we've been talking about. Now this is a nice feature because if you have multiple trailers, we can switch back to that standardized four pole flat and tow those without issue. But if we have our larger trailer we need to pull, we can simply just plug that into our seven way. And they each have these nice little caps here to make sure water and dirt don't get inside and create any issues. So in regards to installation, it's really going to come down to what features our trailer has, but overall it's pretty simple. Most of it's going to be plug and play, but we may need to run a few additional wires, again, depending on which features our trailer has. So now that we've gone over some of the features, let's go ahead and jump right into installation and show you how it's done. So the first step of our installation here, we want to take our four to seven way adapter along with the bracket that comes in our kit. And we're going to go ahead and just attach the two now. In order to do this, there's going to be an open end here, or we can feed the wires in through that opening there. We'll just go ahead and slide the wires through there. And we can go ahead and make sure we have it lined up correctly. And we can fasten the connector to our bracket here using the included hardware. Now we'll go ahead and tighten everything down with a flathead screwdriver. And we're going to be using an 11 30 seconds inch socket. We don't need to tighten it down a whole lot because we don't want to crack the plastic but we do want to get it snug so it doesn't fall out. So now that we have our connector fastened to our bracket here, the next step is to go ahead and find a spot to mount the connector on the vehicle. Now preferably we want to attach it to the cross tube on our hitch here. Um, that's going to be the easiest access for it and it will be the most stable. Now you have a couple different options for this. If you have a draw tight trailer hitch installed on your vehicle, they actually have a welded on trailer connector bracket that we could just attach this to. 
So luckily our vehicle does have that, so we're gonna be using this. However, if not, no worries. We do offer no drill mounting brackets, which essentially feature a band clamp that wraps around the hitch tube, and it'll give you the same connection point here. So if you don't already have a welded on trailer connector bracket on your hitch tube, make sure to go ahead and pick up one of the no drill brackets we offer here at eTrailer. So now we can go ahead and attach our two brackets together using the hardware that comes in our kit for our trailer connector. We're gonna be using the Phillips head screw with the flat washer. That's gonna go on top. And then on the bottom, we're gonna have this lock washer along with our nuts. So let's go ahead. We're gonna be using the outer holes here on that bracket. Now we can go ahead and tighten that down. And to tighten this down, we're just gonna be using a Phillips head screwdriver and a 5 16 inch wrench. So now we can go ahead and make our wiring connections. The first connection we're gonna make here is gonna be the black four pole, which is gonna plug into the four pole in our vehicle. Now obviously this means we need to have an existing four-way trailer connector, but there are plenty of plug and play options for this vehicle. So if you don't already have one, you need to uh, go ahead and pick one of these up along with the four to seven way adapter here. So the first thing we're gonna do is, first of all, we're gonna locate our four pole. Um, if we look underneath here, we're gonna see a grommet. Uh, we're gonna be able to use this grommet to route the, uh, the wiring connector from inside the vehicle to outside. That way we can plug it into our adapter. So once we have that done, we can go ahead and just connect our two four poles together. But before we do that, we're gonna take some dielectric grease here. And we're gonna put a little bit, we're not gonna put a whole lot, but we're just gonna sort of lightly coat the pins with this grease to make sure we don't have any corrosion issues should any water get in there. So again, we're not gonna be using a whole lot, but we are gonna try to coat the pins nice and even. And once we do that, now we're gonna go ahead and plug the two four ways in together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the grease that we pushed there because then I'm gonna take some electrical tape and I'm gonna tape these together to ensure they don't come undone. The next step of our installation here, you can see we have all these remaining wires. So let's go ahead and go over these right now. This wire here is the black wire. This is gonna be for the battery charge line circuit. Now essentially what this is gonna do is if we have a battery on our trailer that we wanna provide a small charge to while we're traveling down the road, we would wanna go ahead and hook up this black wire to the vehicle's battery with a circuit breaker in between. The next wire we're gonna have here is the blue wire, which is gonna be the brake output wire. This wire is gonna be responsible for sending the brake signal from the vehicle to our trailer. So in order to use this properly, we would have to run this into the cab of the vehicle to a brake controller. These other two wires we have left are the purple wire and the white wire. The purple wire here is not gonna be used in the majority of applications because this is gonna be for the reverse light circuit. If we have reverse lights on our trailer, which not many do, and we wanna utilize these, we would need to go ahead and run this into the vehicle's factory reverse light circuit, which would more than likely require splicing. Then last but not least, we have our white ground wire that has a ring terminal already crimped onto the end for us. Now, these next few steps here are really gonna vary depending on what functions your trailer have or what functions you need the seven way to have. This particular customer here only needs the lights to work on the seven way. So the black, blue, and purple wires are all gonna be taped up and secured here behind the hitch tube. We still wanna make them usable in case the customer does want to uh, equip his trailer with some of those features down the line, but we also wanna make sure they're nice and secured with some electrical tape so we don't have any water getting in there and causing some electrical issues. We also wanna make sure they don't fall down and drag on the ground. So now that we have that taped up into a nice bundle, we're just gonna find a way to zip tie it here to the cross tube so again, we don't have to worry about it hanging down and it's up and out of our way. So now the final step here, we have our white wire for the ground with the ring terminal already crimped on. We went ahead and routed that over here to the driver's side of the vehicle. And we're just gonna drill into the bottom of this floor here. I did went ahead and just checked uh, on top of that panel to make sure we weren't gonna be drilling into anything. It's gonna be a pretty important step to do. So now we'll just take a self-tapping screw here, 
we'll just attach our ground by drilling into the bottom of the body. So now that we have all of our wires buttoned up, the last thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna take some more of our dielectric grease here. We're gonna open up both the four and seven way connector here, exposing the pins. We're just gonna go ahead and coat the pins. We'll be a little bit more liberal this time around with the grease here, but we just wanna get it all in there to again, make sure that we don't have any lighting issues should any water get inside. So now we're gonna go ahead and use a tester box here to test out our trailer connector to make sure everything's hooked up properly. Um, if you have your trailer, you could use that as well. Just keep in mind, if there are any issues with the wiring on your trailer, those are gonna carry over to our test here. So in order to really separate the two and really get a true independent test of the vehicle lights and the trailer connector, it's best to use a test box. Let's go ahead and test out the tail lights now, followed by the left turn signal our brake lights, and then finally our right turn signal. So there we go, now we know everything's working correctly. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of Hopkins four and seven pole trailer connector adapter here for our 2019 Toyota Highlander.